of Monolith Film Podcast. Welcome back, episode one. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Ruggero Diodato's Cannibal Holocaust, 1980. When was the first time you saw this? Maybe th- th- two or three years ago? Maybe earlier. Yeah? What did you think the first time? The first time, I didn't mind. I think I might have seen clips first. Okay. Like maybe in high school. And watch some like guy getting his dick cut off or something. Oh, that's brutal. I gotta watch that movie. Yeah. And uh, it was probably about three years ago I watched it the first time, like some YouTube crap rip. And uh, I loved it. I loved the whole thing. The music got me right away in the first two seconds. And uh, just rewatching it now for this uh, this podcast, I found it harder to watch than the first time. I found oh, it more yeah. brutal. Yeah. Okay. I was a bit. Uh, I didn't know that the animal murders were uh were real the first time i okay. think and uh i didn't think it would bother me that much but the turtle was brutal i thought the yeah. turtle was the was the most brutal part of the movie so i watched it for the first time for this podcast i had a chance to watch it twice the first time um i also loved it the first it's time it's too fantastic yeah too. it's i thought it was really good you don't expect it to be good though you expect no. like a cheesy yeah. kind of garbage b horror and it's just it's just fantastically done and then the second time I watched it, because I showed my brother, and uh, I liked it less the second time. Did he like yeah. it? He liked it, yeah. But I didn't like it less because of the gore. I liked it less just because I thought it was less effective For sure, yeah. the second time around. The shock of it was gone. Yeah. yeah. So I guess we should introduce the movie we're talking about. Did we already introduce it? A little bit? You want to give uh, it a little summary? Sure, yeah. Cannibal Holocaust is a movie about a film crew who is trying to film a documentary about cannibals in the Amazon rainforest, and they get lost. So an anthropologist who's a professor in New York Played by a porn star. I heard that, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Pretty funny. He did porn, this movie, back to porn. (laughs) (laughs) That's the only thing he did? That's it. That's the only one. He kind of looks... Tremendous role. He's got the mustache for him. Yeah, I was going to say, he kind of looks like a porn star, too. So the anthropologist goes down to the Amazon to find them, and he uh, mingles with the cannibals, almost sympathizes with them, learns to understand them yeah. more than the film crew ever tried Humanizes to. Humanizes them, for yeah. sure. Eats with them and everything, does their tradition. Yeah. And then he recovers the footage and brings it back to New York. Where <laughs> That's a pretty phony explanation they give. It just kind of is like, isn't it him eating the meat? Yeah. And then it's back him in New York. And yeah. his explanation is, oh, they thought I could take the human soul with my camera and my voice recorder. So they, we were the only ones who could take the evil spirit. Like some garbage answer. Yeah. That was a nice little plot short. <laughs> a little nice, uh, what is it, deus ex machina? Just squish Just it down, just compress it all out. Problem solved. We'll tell it, not show anything. <laughs> and then, so when they show the footage recovered... That's when it gets to the juicy bits. Yeah. So halfway through the movie, it's a complete shift from 35 millimeter shot like a fiction film of this anthropologist going into the jungle. And then the anthropologist and a uh, New York TV crew who are interested in the footage uh, go over the rough cuts. And then the whole movie switches to a 16 millimeter kind of handheld cinema verite style uh kind of fake documentary of what these documentarians filmed in the jungle yeah you mentioned the song i love the, the music song. fantastic it I was it was, tremendous. it was so hard not to <laughs> smile during the opening you credits. really can't because you love it it's just a song that pulls you right in from the beginning you're seeing guys getting their heads chopped off their limbs cut off some girls getting a stone shoved in her <laughs> And there's this beautiful music playing, <laughs> and you just have to smile. Yeah, it was, it, it's good right off the bat. It kind of like throws you off, you know? Like you've, I've heard so much about this movie, and then it opens to this just beautiful song. And then I'm like, whoa, what am I getting into? You know, what do I expect now? And then they juxtapose it beautifully with all the gore later, bringing you back to that nice feeling from the opening credits. Panning over the beautiful scenery. The music is playing off of, um, like, the Italian, I think it's Mondo genre. Let me check that out. Yeah, and then after the opening credits, 
when it jumps into that uh, news broadcaster, mm -hmm. and he's describing the cannibals in the jungle, and it's just shots of New York. I thought that was also a nice juxtaposition. I'm not sure whether they were going for, like, describing the jungle while showing New York, implying that New York is the jungle. I think that's what they were. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or if they were doing, kind of like, implying that Americans are the civilized people. That's a, that's a kind of funny thing about the movie. I think the argument he's making, especially with, like, the last line and you know where the yeah the anthropologist goes oh uh, who are the real savages yeah i think like he says cannibals cannibals yeah who are the yeah. real cannibals uh a bit of a heavy-handed uh summary yeah. at the end and uh but the funny thing i think is that uh to make his argument diodato did the complete antithesis of the argument he was a fucking dickhead he was a slave driver just exploitative, destroying these natives and these yeah. animals to uh, to get the shots to make the argument against his own behavior. Yeah, I thought, by the end of it, I thought the whole movie was kind of meta in that sense. Mm -hmm. Like, it's this whole argument against sens sensationalism. And, but he really, I mean, he's kind of almost talking about the movie he made. I think right? he is, yeah, yeah. He's directly talking about, well, what does the... Uh, the New York TV uh, producer say she's like, uh, people want us to rape their senses. Yeah, the more you rape their senses, the more they like it. Exactly. So he's kind of going against it while working in it. Yeah. That's See, that's what I liked the first time around. Mm -hmm. But when on my second viewing, and something my brother had brought up, was that they kind of don't get to that until the end. It's kind of just shock. Pretty well. And then bam, here's the meaning of the movie, you know? It's mm -hmm. not very subtle at the end. And then it's not very present in the beginning. It starts, I'd say, when the movie shifts halfway through, when the when the diptych goes to the uh, lost footage section. Yeah. I think that's really when the kind of argument starts. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you get a, you get a bit of foreshadowing with that intro in New York. Yeah. But it's nothing... I mean, they're just pretty much spoon feeding you at the end of it. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Or when I don't know well, what's the part where um, the documentarians are in the jungle and they see this native girl and they gang rape her, and then the next scene they see a woman impaled on a spike. And they go, "Oh, awesome!" Yeah. Okay. Oh wait, we'll start shooting. Oh, this is just terrible. Yeah, that all, was good. All that was, kind of stuff. Was that the same girl? That they raped? No, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Yeah. Okay, because uh, the first time oh, I didn't could think have been it was actually, either. Maybe. And then, again, my brother actually pointed out he thought they did that. He thought they impaled her after raping her just for the shot. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I thought that Would was interesting. Check that out? Yeah. Because they do make that virginity comment. Yeah, exactly. It? So if they gang raped her before, maybe, yeah. And I, I mean, didn't even think of that. It's not, it wouldn't be the first time they faked footage. That was kind of the whole point. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, about the music, it is the mondo Italian genre. It's like a subgenre of kind of B garbage exploitation kind of movies, oh, and quick okay. stuff, and they all have these kind of big romance soundtracks, these big overtures, ba 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 da, ba, and I think he was doing uh, some kind of satire on that okay. while working in the genre of this mondo kind of gonzo exploitation. Yeah, that seems to be a recurring theme with him mm -hmm. of criticizing the genre while working in it. This was the first found footage movie, right? Yeah. I was thinking about it. I think... I'm not sure found footage is the right word. I think it was kind of hijacked, that phrase. Yeah. And I think, like, found footage was its own genre of where you find the footage of someone else, and you take clips from, like, a thousand different movies, you find all this footage from a thousand different movies, and you compile it into, like, a, a compilation movie. Oh, okay. So I think that... That used to be called found footage movies, and I think they kind of got hijacked the phrase, and they turned it to like compilation movies, where it's almost pictures just zooming in and music kind of stuff. Okay, because I always thought found footage was stuff like uh, yeah, like, like Blair Witch and stuff. Yeah, and Blair yeah. Witch exactly. That's why I, I use lost footage when I talk about it. Okay, but same thing, I guess. We're talking about the same thing. Yeah. Um, I had a question about a scene in the movie. Yeah. When uh, the anthropologist professor mm -hmm. and the and his guide 
are in the village where the hut was burnt down. They're drink they're drinking just this white paste. Oh yeah. What is that? Yeah, that's sick that scene. I think that is uh I'm not sure what they're drinking exactly, but I believe there's some kind of like Latin American or like ancient uh Mesoamerican time, I guess you'd call it. But uh, like pre-Columbian times and they would get a bunch of corn husks or corn meal and just chew it up into like paste and yeah. spit it out and ferment it into like a beer. Okay. Uh, that's what I was kind of getting, but yeah, I don't it know just what looked they were like eating. Glue. It was glue, yeah. yeah. It was like paste. It looked like yeah, but I think was... they were trying to do something like that. Okay, just make some disgusting mouth drink. Yeah, that was gross. Yeah, it was pretty gross. Like that was almost grosser <laughs> than actually, some of the gore. I'm glad there was a cut there. Yeah, that was, that was pretty gross. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this uh, the documentary, the documentarians whose footage is found, they uh, they find on these tapes or on this uh, film that they're just doing horrible things exploiting the natives to get the footage to make a sensational documentary they're trying to set two tribes against each other by uh kind of massacring one herding all the tribes people into a, a hut and burning it down and blaming it on the other tribe for their movie but the tribe gets wise to them massacres them in different ways or cuts them up in different ways and uh the movie ends who's the savage is the question <laughs> yeah are we any more civilized than they? I'm inclined to say that we're more civilized just based on our definition of civilization. On pants. Right? <laughs> pants and shoes. Right. Help, yeah. But then it's also just a question of, like, it's impossible for us to even know about their culture. Right? Yeah, but... It seems uncivilized to us because we don't yeah. know anything about it. I mean, obviously, these are fake... Yeah, I think the tribe names are real, but okay. nothing about what they do is real. So uh, there's a lot of, like, mysticism and rumor about this movie. Yeah. What's real, what's not. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, I can't wait to talk about that. Were the... I know the animal death was real. Yeah. Were the cannibals actual Amazonian tribe members? They were tribe members, but... Not cannibals. Right. I think so, yeah. But or like, they like didn't, ever cannibals. They didn't anything. know English. They didn't know what they... I'm not sure how it worked. Okay. I, because when Eli Roth did uh, Green Inferno, his, uh, what did you say, homage to uh, yeah. Cannibal Holocaust? Yeah. He, uh, I don't think he paid the tribes people. I think he gave them food and built a house or something. Built okay. a well. I think that's how he paid them. And it's funny, when he went to that, that tribe... He sh they'd never seen movies before, and the first movie he showed them was Cannibal Holocaust. Nice. <laughs> and uh, apparently they loved it. Oh, yeah? The kids and everyone got together and <laughs> watched it, and apparently it's fantastic. I would have loved to be in that hut. Yeah, that would have been pretty cool. Okay. But yeah, these, uh, the levels of trickery in the movie, I thought were, uh, were very cool, what we were uh, introducing there. The, uh, the levels that Diodato goes to to build doubt in your mind make you question what's real in the movie or not because uh i guess if you watch just the 60 millimeter parts and you take out all the uh the cross cutting back to the 35 with the um, the anthropologist watching the the clips yeah uh, you could be tricked into thinking that's real right and that's what happened back in yeah. the 80s right yeah 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 um but he throws in all these these different layers of trickery in there He's got the animals. You don't know if they're real. They're fake. If they're that's a good costume, it's a real animal that they're killing. And then you see the 16 millimeter stuff. You go, oh, is that real? That looks different than the the nice 35 polished stuff. You know, why is it shaking around like crazy? And then there's the movie inside the movie, uh, The Road to Hell, right? Which is a uh, a supposed documentary that the lost documentarians had made before their jungle movie about. Um, just looks like executions in third world countries yeah and uh the the um tv executive or producer says hey it pretty heavy stuff looks real right well actually uh these guys these documentarians paid all them and it's all a setup so then you think oh it looked real but it's a setup but then if you do any research some extra textual research you find out that these clips are actually real like the clips diodato used yeah it's real, real execution clips. shots okay. so that's the real snuff stuff okay. in the movie so then if you find that out you go well, what the hell like it's i think it's real then it's not real then it turns out it is real then are the animal killings real are the cannibals real is the 16 millimeter stuff real and all these levels of doubt 
kind of trick you, and I guess they tricked the Italian moviegoers in 1980 yeah. into thinking what's real and what's not. Because he went to court and everything, right? He got arrested. Yeah. yeah. yeah he, got, the, he, uh, he was charged with murdering all the actors in the movie because it looked so real. Yeah. What's the story? He paid all of them uh, to go into hiding for a year after yeah, the movie. Yeah, I heard that. No, pu- <laughs> no publicity, <laughs> yeah. nothing. And then uh, he got taken to court for making a... Uh, a snuff film. Snuff movie. Yeah. And he had to get the actors out of hiding to say, no, we're live. Okay. And that, that shot we mentioned before where uh, the tribeswoman is impaled on the uh, right. Vlad the Impaler spike. And uh, they had to reenact that in court. To, really? To prove that it, was real, that it wasn't real. Yeah. Okay. And uh, apparently no one could do it. So, ooh. Ooh. A little ooh. trickery there. But uh, the story is that it was a pole with a bike seat on it. And she just sat. So uh, just okay. the bike seat and had it like in her mouth. Okay. The, the pole sticking out of her mouth. But uh, I don't think anyone ever recreated it in court. And also the the 35 millimeter stuff in the first half of the movie. Even that is filmed kind of documentary style. Yeah, definitely. When they're in the jungle, for sure, it seems like you're zooming in. And it's always from yeah. behind brush. There's always like trees in the foreground, like you're peeking in on something. Especially the way they open after the uh, scenic footage with just a straight up news report. Yeah. about the professor going yeah and then it's almost like the news report is following the professor mm-hmm. yeah i found it was yeah there, there's so many layers of doubt that could be built in i found that, that that i think is the maybe the reason why a movie like this and not uh i don't know what we were talking about before a green monster from uh, death river or something any other movie like that these kind of b thrillers yeah why this one is still people still talk about it why we're still talking about this and not like the man from deep river or uh or, or like the serbian <laughs> film yeah something like that cannibal terror cannibal ferox yeah any other movie with cannibal yeah the these, these terrible spin-offs <laughs> yeah exactly. apparently there's six unofficial uh sequels to it oh really i think so yeah what it, what happens i, I get the get eaten i guess <laughs> yeah I people guess. get eaten but uh I, I doubt that any of those are worth anything this i think at least filmically it's shot nice yeah i agree it I, looks good yeah. and the i mean we talked about the opening credit song but the whole soundtrack that, uh, it just complements everything so well yeah. i think this one and zombie 2 have you heard zombie 2 soundtrack no those are the big famous kind of italian soundtracks of these horror ones I okay think. those two i think stand out as the best we were talking about how good it is technically yeah but i found the audio like not the soundtrack yeah, but the audio the is a little shoddy well the whole thing it's all adr it's all uh, additional dialogue recorded right, yeah so they just film it and then do the, the sound like we've done that right like exactly. they record all the sound afterwards so they, they think it's a snuff movie these italian authorities right but there's adr and the whole thing yeah they hired voice actors to go i'm getting murdered <laughs> <laughs> and then i don't know that, that was kind of funny i thought there's a no one caught the adr <laughs> yeah i don't get that either there's a scene when the uh, professor first enters the jungle with his his guide and the guide's friend, yeah, the guy, and then yeah. they, have, they have that cannibal hostage or whatever, yeah. and the hostage trips, he slashes the machete into the tree, yeah. and it doesn't stick. The machete just oh, falls okay. to the ground, <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice. and like the sound is off, the, oh, yeah. the cut is off, <laughs> and then later, sure. the buddy says he'll stab you first chance he gets, and. The, the footage just cuts him off mid sentence. Oh, does it but really? The sentence continues. Well, there you go. Yeah, that's, so that's the joys of ADR. Though. There's a few editing mishaps in there. Yeah, the the audio it's not terrible though. You've seen a lot worse ADR. Yeah, definitely. A lot, oh, I'm kung fu. Uh, movie like that would be <laughs> terrible, but this one's not too bad. I think it's worse in the in the 35. The 60 millimeter. I think it almost some of it might be live sound. I think. Yeah, and I think even if it is a little off, it kind of complements it well. Yeah, because they the they mentioned the footage yeah. being a little, mm. a little damaged by the weather because they were left uh, in these cans. Yeah, yeah, in the film canisters, just in the jungle for like months, right? I kind of wanted to talk about uh, the directorial uh, restraint of Diodato. Okay. He kind of, I think he treated this like a, like a monster movie, or how you'd want to make a monster movie. Where you kind of, you tease the monster, you know? You don't show the, the shark right away. You right. have, like, the jaw sound, blah, 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 and you go, the shark's scary, you know? But you never actually see the shark until the end of the movie. And this, we have to wait pretty well halfway through the movie before we see 
or even three quarters, really, until we see any cannibal murder. Yeah. We get teased with a little thing where the the woman is... Uh, yeah, the uh, punishment she, for yeah, adultery. Yeah, is killed with a rock. Yeah. That's like a teaser. That's not just murder. That's not cannibalism. Right. So he holds back on the cannibalism until the very end. So he's building the tension the whole way. Oh, who's going to get eaten? How are they going to get eaten? Are you going to put them in a pot? What's going to happen? But uh, I thought that was interesting, how he, he builds this fear or builds it up. Like, he could just give it away in the first two seconds and you go oh that's scary like i don't know he, he waits till the end. i think that was one of the problems with um the green inferno eli okay. roth's uh remake of it because he kind of shows you cannibalism maybe right when they get there almost yeah there might be right at the beginning of the second act if i remember correctly they get to the jungle and then these cannibals start going crazy okay so i think they give it away right away yeah i think on that note the the main criticism i hear for this movie is that it is pure sensationalism which i think is definitely not yeah no i don't there's so. a lot of substance to this film yeah that yeah. i think you're supposed to be distracted from for sure I but mean, it's definitely there yeah it's like well it's also a critique and uh maybe a commentary on documentary form or documentary ethics uh, what's real in documentary documentary is supposed yeah. to be real but is it really real i think he, he's commenting on a lot of things there but with the sensational right. mask on the front so everyone goes whoa this guy's getting his dick cut off that's crazy <laughs> but maybe uh you go back you leave the theater thinking about something the uh did you want to talk about the the Eli? You haven't seen that, the Eli. Roth I have not film. seen Green Inferno. I've not seen that. I, uh, I'll, uh, I'll give it my quick, quick critique. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Do it. Um. I saw it in the theater, and I had a great time. But I think it was more the theater experience. Okay. That added to it. Oh, you're with your buddies. You're scared. Whoa, well, what's gonna happen? You know, you're in nice seats. And then I watched it again at home in like my living room, and I didn't like it that much. Okay. So, and I, I think I didn't like it because the same reason you said you didn't like cannibal holocaust as much the second time we saw it. i think i knew where the punches were coming right when the shocks were but even like above that i kind of knew when the cuts were coming because it was done pretty formulaic like you have your scene wide shot coming a bit closer medium shot drama builds okay close up okay drama's over go back a bit drama's happening cut fast cut fast cut fast okay next scene and there would always be three shots okay like the the rule of three yeah. palette cleanser in between scenes and this was through it the whole movie. So that, that was my problem with it. They, you, it was formulaic, and you could kind of tell what was going to happen. Interesting. Throughout. And there's a bit of goofy parts. I don't know. Do you want me to spoil it for you? Yeah, go for it. Uh, one of the guys is like a stoner. Because there's always like, you know, the modern uh, yeah, horror yeah. movies. There's always like a goofy character, a hot chick, and a black guy or something. Those are the three people you have to have in these Yeah. These have you movies. seen uh, Cabin in the Woods? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's fun. We, we might do that one. I think that yeah, that's a, that's a good one. That's a nice meta horror movie as well. But... Um, what were you talking about? Green Inferno. Green Inferno. It's like they the got the stoner, the hot chick. Yeah, it's got the stoner and the hot chick. But the uh, the part that's uh, stupid is that they get caged by these cannibals, I think. And the stoner has this crazy weed that he has. And he feeds it to the cannibals. And the cannibals share it among everyone. And the whole village gets buzzed out. And then that's how they escape. So that's pretty goofy, that yeah. part. But I mean... <laughs> Diodato doesn't really... He goes a different route, I think. Yeah, definitely. There's no goofy stoner characters in this one. Might add to the story. Who knows? I don't think it was necessary. Uh, any kind of comic relief. And there's really no comic relief in the whole movie. No, none. Unless, unless you uh, unless you <laughs> yeah. think someone getting his dick cut off is funny. Second time, <laughs> maybe. First time could be a different story. I mean, it almost sounds like... Uh, Eli Roth was it? Yeah, yeah, was almost doing like a cash grab, like oh, like what uh, exploitation films were supposed to be. Yeah, but I think him he was. I think his girlfriend might have been the leading lady in it. Oh yeah, and I think he didn't have much money for it. I think he did want to do a proper homage. Yeah, he's like, oh, I gotta get this made too, so I have to okay. have some goofy stuff in it to get some money in. True, something okay. like that maybe, but. In the theater with your buddies, you have a beer before. It's a fun movie, fun to see. You have some popcorn. You get scared. Or not really scared, but you go, oh, I, they're grabbing her face. That's it. That's always the picture, right? Some girl right. getting her face grabbed. I don't know what's so horrible about that. It's <laughs> like a nice massage. Have you gotten any of those uh, Amazonian head shrinker massages? <laughs> they're fantastic. 
<laughs> you were uh, talking about journalistic integrity before. Yeah. I saw or I read that right before Diodato made this movie, there were some revolutions in Italy. And all of the news footage was focused on like almost romanticizing the revolution instead of presenting it factually. Okay, yeah. And so there's this theory, I guess, that Diodato was commentating directly on news, news broadcasting. Theory. About sensationalizing? Yeah. Like, not just on movies in Hollywood, but on news, news itself. reporting itself, yeah. For sure, there's the, uh, there's a critique on all that kind of, all the media, mass media streams, the yeah. TV, the, uh, the journalistic integrity, the, the documenter, uh, documentarian integrity. Um, I think he does, does it well. I think he, I think he does it well. very well. Yeah, definitely. Again, my only, my only gripe with that is the fact that it's kind of like forced down your throat in the third act. It's a little heavy handed. Yeah. If it would have been a little more subtle throughout, yeah. I wouldn't have minded, but it's almost absent in the first two acts. I think it might have been uh, an add-in after. Oh, yeah? I think maybe because he might have done this, made this movie. I believe it took a year to make. Okay. And one of the actors' parents were murdered or something. Like, a bunch of terrible things happened throughout production. It took it forever to, to get finished. It was just some terrible production, horrible production. And, um, like, a nightmare, kind of, to shoot right. it. And... Um, it seems almost as though he made this this crazy gore movie, kills a bunch of animals, does some crazy gory. All of the, the practical effects were fantastic. Yeah. It? The practical definitely. effects were great. So this crazy gory movie, all this crazy stuff happens in it. I think he needed some other layer of anything on top right. to, to make it not just a triple X rated yeah. uh, murder movie. He needed some kind of uh, artistic uh, input into right. it. Uh, that might be where the okay. the critique came and so strong at the end. Yeah, it seems... I, it really I would believe that. Yeah. Yeah. On the practical effects, it almost feels like they were killing more animals backstage <laughs> and using their guts and blood for the practical effects because they look real, real. They do look very real. There's some fantastic ones. <laughs> yeah. Some good ones. There are some goofy parts, though. If you look in the background, you see... Some oh, guys definitely. Yes. Axing a bit slow. There's when, some uh, slow axing in the back. When the the girl, what was her name, Faye? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When Faye gets killed after the cannibals are done raping her, yeah, they bring her like they drag her body two feet, yeah, further for no reason, <laughs> yeah. and then they start beating her with sticks. But it's like yeah. the slowest stick yeah. movement. Yeah, they're not. Uh, that was bad. It's not too too great, but the. We've been uh, teasing this dick cut off for a while. <laughs> I think it is uh, it is the best effect in the movie. I yeah, think. I think it, it is. I mean, apart from the effect. actual real practical effects. Yeah, the real uh, killings. There are yeah. seven animals. I think it was seven. Seven animals they killed. I have a list here, IMDb list. Okay. I will. I only remember three. Quote it. Possum, turtle, monkey. Oh, snake, tarantula. Oh, there's more. That's true. Those ones are like kind of little though. Like That's the, the spider. Thing. Yeah. You can't, I think anyone would squish a spider, but... Yeah, that okay, one... Yeah, here it is. Uh, a Cody Mundi. That was when the uh, anthropologist and uh, the two guides were there. He's holding like a little, almost uh, squirrel-looking animal, and he sticks a stick through his head. Uh, I thought that was the possum. Oh, okay. But probably. That says uh, Cody Mundi. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I thought they call it a possum in the movie. I thought he's like, I caught a possum. Oh, no. Does he say muskrat? Oh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a yellow spotted river turtle. We were talking right. about how yellow the innards were of that yellow yeah. spotted turtle. It was interesting how yellow it was. I didn't think it would be that yellow. I was just inside. expecting... I mean, he rips the shell clean off. I yeah. was expecting way more blood. It was pretty clean, like a yeah. crab almost. A strange... Yeah. I mean, he they decapitate him, and yeah. there's like no blood. I don't think so, yeah. That, like is brutal, that, yeah that, that is brutal, that part, Yeah, it's definitely crazy. rough. That is crazy, that yeah. part. And... I was, I was reading and listening to what other people had to say about the movie, and they said, oh, completely unnecessary. It's not really unnecessary. Yeah, I didn't think so either. All those build yeah. on that these American guys are terrible. Exactly. So it's not not unnecessary. Well, it's a, as unnecessary as any other scene in that sequence. But, like, if those scenes weren't there, 
Yeah. You would almost be inclined to sympathize with them when they die. For sure. Which is not what you're supposed That's to do. That's the opposite of the point of the movie. Right. So I think I think those scenes are there to make you Hate aware. Yeah, as much as exactly. you can. I was tricked, though, the first time. I thought that everything was fake the first time. Because the practical effects right. of the murders of the, uh, the, the cannibals killing the people were so well done. Right. I thought that everything else was real too so I, I was tricked yeah i had heard prior to seeing it for my first oh, you time did? Yeah. yeah that the animal deaths were real and i had known about the whole controversy and the yeah. court case and everything so i knew <laughs> going in what was fake and what was real but i didn't know that the last road to hell footage was real yeah that's pretty crazy that's too. rough that's a little brutal yeah but going it's back kind of funny that they tell you that it's fake and yeah. it is real <laughs> yeah that's what's interesting Get going back if i watch it a third time which i most definitely will it's uh, a fun seeing... like midnight movie. It it's is. A, it's a really good midnight movie. Yeah. You pair this with something goofy and it'd be fantastic. Yes. A I nice double go. feature with <laughs> exactly. a nice raunchy comedy afterwards. It's perfect. SpongeBob movie. <laughs> Tremendous. But yeah, the uh watching that knowing it's real might affect me more now. Yeah, well, yeah, it's it's wacky. It it definitely uh takes you for a loop once you start doing some research on the movie yeah. and you read what happened and you know that monkey scene where they uh scalp the monkey yeah I think they do i think that took two or three takes oh no <laughs> that's like two or three different monkeys that's another thing the <laughs> actors yeah like the, the actor yeah. who cut the heads the turtle's head off and then played with it yeah. and like played with the camera and everything <laughs> that's all a, a real monkey skull imagine <laughs> reading the <laughs> script yeah, in the exactly. morning in makeup in the jungle how do you like how does your agent give you that script and you'd be like, yeah, I want to do this movie? That might be why they hired ex-porn stars yep. <laughs> to do it. I think there were also brothel whores that were uh, involved in the production too. Okay. I think a lot of the background people were all hookers and uh, stuff. Okay. I thought you meant like uh, off-camera. Oh. <laughs> nice little, well, you they never got know. Paid. <laughs> you never know with these guys. Maybe that's how they paid the tribesmen. We're going to ship these whores from Italy. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> You have 30 minutes, though. We're shipping them for 42 hours. Oh, God. Well, yeah, one thing I thought was a bit goofy, too, when, um, I th yeah, it's when the anthropologist first shows up and there's the uh, stone adultery uh, yeah. punishment. It's a white girl. It's a white woman who's getting yeah. beat. Yeah, I noticed that, too. I thought it was fate right off yeah. the bat. Yeah, me too. Even most of the time when the tribe of cannibals is killing or punishing a female tribe member yeah they look a lot paler than the rest of the tribe yeah i think every that, single girl i think it is because they are just white actors that, okay i think the tribe's women didn't want to do the part that's why they're all covered in mud yeah pretty well okay i think that's what the story was if i remember correctly that it was just like i don't know the script woman or production uh whoever on set yeah and she said oh i'll just do the role that would make sense it's hard to convince an yeah. Amazonian who doesn't speak English yeah. to get raped by a stone on camera. Not hard to convince the men to do the raping with a stone, though, which is mm, fun. That is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the actors were tremendous in it. The, the tribesmen, I thought, were pretty good. Yeah, honestly. They did all right. They didn't look at camera. They were fantastic. They just, ooh, 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 there, was a, there was a few scenes, like right off the bat, when the yeah. army men are gunning them down. Mm -hmm. Well, any time one of the cannibals dies, it's absolutely ridiculous. They just they go, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. They always throw their arms up and just fall slowly to the ground. That's how pygmies die, dude. That's, You've never yeah. gone pygmy hunting before. That's what happens. That's how they so. do it. Overall, a tremendous movie, though. I agree. Do you think you could uh, give it a rating on uh, on ten? Um, on ten. Five being average, though. Five being an average movie. Yeah. On. So I rate every movie I watch on Letterboxd. Okay, yeah. So I gave it a four and a half out of five. Tremendous. So it would be a nine out of ten. Near perfect. I'd say somewhere around there, too. I'd yeah. probably give it, yeah, eight. eight I think half. the first time I watched it, it was definitely a five and a half. Yeah. So almost perfect, but... Or a four and a half. Then. Right, four yeah. and a half. Yeah, my bad. Near perfect, but again, the few... With the ADR problems. gifts, yeah. Yeah, the stuff ADR. like that, you know. Yeah. But again, when watching movies from the 80s, sometimes it's just... Even I mean, the production value like is so much well, better the nowadays. Thing is, this ADR is way better than any The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, any Fistful yes, of Dollars. That's Those are true. terrible ADR. That's true. And these, this is uh, Leaps and Bound Ahead. It's a few years uh, older, uh, I believe, but still. 
Even uh, Star Wars There's some has, goofy w- ones has some pretty bad ADR, like way There's worse than this one. movie. Okay, yeah, the good, the bad, and the ugly is 15 years older, but uh, still people think of classic uh, classic movies. That ADR is terrible. Apart from the ADR, the acting isn't great either. No, no. But, I mean, the acting is so secondary to the film that it almost doesn't matter. Yeah, and like the, I think the 16mm stuff is worse acted than yeah. the other stuff. Yeah. Uh, like, what's the part where uh, the girl has a spider on her shoulder, a tarantula? Yeah. When Faye has a tarantula on her shoulder, but it's clearly uh, a pipe cleaner uh, Halloween <laughs> toy. <laughs> Get her off! Ah! 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 And she's just yelling. Yeah, or even before they set off on their journey, they're yeah. in that room, and they're all... Two of them are just naked. Yeah, that was... Yeah. She freaks out for a second, and then is calm for yeah, a second. That's and a then... bad ADR scene. Yes. Yeah. That's a bad one. Or when they have sex in the middle of the muddy village yeah that's a After good way burning to get half the village worms or something yeah yeah was that supposed to be real the sex i think the sex wasn't yeah. simulated i think it was real yeah the uh the burning there was a rumor that it was real the burning of the hut while the cannibals were inside yeah was real oh it was yeah oh, i yeah? heard that really diodato put all of those cannibals in the hut and started burning it with zero safety precautions None of them got injured or died. When you're in the jungle. <laughs> but he did... Apparently that did actually happen. Sometimes you gotta burn down a hut full of uh, villagers. What can you do? Hey, I mean, I'm not... I mean... What can you do? Turned that well. Right? <laughs> yeah. I like the show. And the music over that scene, too. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. That's when they pipe in the opening credits music, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was good. That was a bit of a funny uh, save, too, when the uh, anthropologist and editor are watching the found clips... And the uh, editor's like, oh, I threw in some stock music over which uh, to put it. It's like, dur, 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 yeah. dur, in the perfect spot. That was good. It was tremendous. One of my favorite lines is uh, when they're showing that footage, the raw footage. Yeah. And the editor uh, ta- is talking about the film crew. And then they show the super obscene shot. <laughs> and he goes, real professionals. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, yeah. that got me. They were good. Real professionals. That was so funny. It's them naked yeah, jumping, exactly. fishing and stuff on the war. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another real goofy, tacky scene. Yeah. When they're crossing the river on the raft, and they just keep cutting to the crocodile that. and the oh, anaconda, yeah. Yeah. but they never show any of it yeah. in the same Get shot. Get out of the water! The caiman's coming! Get out of the water! God. That was... That might have been the worst scene. Keep rolling! Keep rolling! <laughs> with this terrible voiceover. And you never see a wide shot of the river. No. It's always just close up yeah. of the crocodile, close up of the anaconda, close up of the raft. It's probably Diodato's uh, lazy <laughs> river in his backyard. Put more mud in, honey. Put more mud in the water. It's got to look good. Oh, yeah, we were talking about uh, directorial uh, restraint, mm. about not showing the monster until uh, kind of near the very end to give it a, a proper tension building and uh, climactic reveal. Yeah. Uh, I thought it might be fun because we're going to be talking about the witch uh soon enough i think yeah um i want to give maybe a little teaser to that movie yeah i I thought uh i thought that movie didn't do that correctly oh really yeah that was my one gripe with that interesting yeah i thought you were going the complete opposite direction with that i was not happy with how they did the witch in the witch yeah or how they revealed that the witch was real really i love that you liked it i liked it it got me when what is it it's like Almost in the first act, still. You don't really know what's going on. They're in the... Did they announce that the witch is real? Yeah, when they first announced it. Because they, they show you the baby getting pestle and mortared in the woods. Oh, yeah? Midway. Yeah, and it's Maybe like I need to rewatch in between. it. Yeah, and it kind of, I thought it kind of ruined the tension for me. Because, I don't remember that. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, a, okay. Because if that shot wasn't there, and you have the whole stuff with the goat... Because you don't see the witch, I think, until the very end. Yeah, after. exactly. Yeah. But in that first thing, when the baby first goes missing, and they go, oh, was it the daughter or whatever? They're, yeah. they're questioning it. You as the viewer, you don't know if the witch is real. But then it shows you the baby getting pestle mortared. Maybe it was the version I saw, but I remember seeing the pestle mortar. And I thought that was the one thing that that kind of took me away from the uh, the story of that movie. It yeah, because I, oh. I remember questioning whether or not the daughter was the witch for the entire movie. Oh, do you? Yeah, I don't remember ever thinking she wasn't the witch. Really? I think it was on Netflix. I might just load up that clip just to check, but if it's right, that was the one thing I didn't 
I didn't like about that that movie. If, Other than that, I loved it. If you're right, and I just didn't notice, then I definitely agree with you. Because yeah. my favorite part about that movie that they did that I thought originally they did so well mm-hmm. was that this girl gets absolutely fucked over by her family, mm-hmm. and it turns out she was never the witch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if you found out earlier, then yeah, that's. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you do. Um, Friday night we uh went out. Yeah. I had my laptop on me because I was at school all day. Okay. We were just in a bar, and I just yeah. started playing Cannibal Holocaust. <laughs> just watching it right there in the bar. <laughs> There's no better spot to watch. Yeah, it. it was pretty funny. Needless to say, people were not so pleased. We didn't like it. No. N- not the not the right. The uh, bartender and the. <laughs> not the right crowd, I think. Yeah. Speaking of uh, Netflix, yeah. for any listeners who want to watch Cannibal Holocaust, I'm almost positive the entire movie is on YouTube for free. Yeah, it is. It is. It's also on Shudder. Yeah. Apart from that, I mean, YouTube's pretty easy for everyone to access, so go yeah. for it, right? Or just Google Cannibal Holocaust. I'm sure you can find it online somewhere in every... Uh... Any kind of exploitation movie shop or anything you get, any old VHS DVD kind of shop would definitely have uh, this movie as a staple or as an exploitation staple. Yeah, definitely. I think I was reading an argument online talking about whether or not, whether this or the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre was the like apex exploitation film. That's a tough one to choose from. Yeah, Texas, the, the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre, even the second one I like. I like Dennis Hopper. He's the, uh, I think he's the cop in the second one. I'm a, I'm a big Dennis Hopper fan, so I like the first two Texas Chainsaw Massacres. Even, not the most recent remake, I think it might have been 2009 remake something. There's Texas a 2003 remake directed by Marcus Nispel, and there's a Texas Chainsaw 3D back in 2013. Okay, definitely not that. yeah. Um, there's a 20, 2006. Might have been the 2006 one. That one's called Chainsaw, Chainsaw Texas, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. Yeah, it might have been that one. But the first two definitely I like yes, quite yeah, a bit. Yes, yeah, the 74 and 86. Yeah, yeah. those are definitely the uh, the two cool ones. Um, the the original, if I remember correctly, that's almost, almost in the same kind of style, like, handheld camera going crazy mental shots yeah just, i think it's pretty yeah it's pretty rough it's spectacle but it's uh it's almost like technical spectacle at the same time yeah it uh the form of the movie shocks you it's an interesting narrative uh narrative structure i thought of cannibal holocaust having a, a diptych having 45 minutes of one movie and then 45 minutes of another movie together in one i thought that was an interesting uh entry narrative structure to uh to make your movie in two sections. I like that as well. Something I liked was that you get introduced to the original film crew that went missing, mm-hmm. right? And you, you're you told to sympathize with them yeah, because they're just this film crew who went missing. Yeah. And then you experience the cannibals through the eyes of the professor. And you go... And then you end up sympathizing with them instead. Yeah. Yeah. And then the movie encourages that further by showing mm-hmm. the film crew being absolute monsters. It's almost the same thing as um, Full Metal Jacket. That's another two-parter movie where you're kind of, the first half of the movie is the, um, the boot camp stuff. Okay. So you go, yeah, these American guys are good. And then kind of halfway, maybe near the end, you go, Ooh, maybe these boot camp guys aren't so good. And they, uh, have you seen the movie? No, I haven't. won't spoil anything for you. That's okay. a good one. Yeah. And then the second half of the movie is in Vietnam. And you go, ooh, maybe, oh, okay. maybe everything's not so good here, you know? Yeah. So uh, that's kind of the same structure as this, these two-part these two part stories. Or even what we're going to watch, uh, I don't know if we're going to watch it, but we're talking about it, the uh, Tropical Malady. Right. Is the, the same thing, a two-part like that. But it's almost like a... Uh, like an analogy, the second the second section. I think that that's a... You see that in a few movies where you'd have your A plot or your A B plot as the main narrative and you'd have like like a analogy sections or yeah. kind of metaphor metaphoric sections yeah, definitely. in the movie. You get that pretty heavy with uh Mother by Aronofsky. Yeah. Yeah. That's a huge just I mean the whole movie's pretty much an I mean I mean I mean the A plot of that movie is pretty much an analogy. 
Mm-hmm. Or an allegory. Thing. Yeah, it's a few of them. I, th- I think that's more uh, yeah, more allegory. allegorical. Um, we're we're going to talk about it when we talk about Herzog, but um, Heart of Glass is like that too. That's bookended by two analogies. Okay. Do you think like uh, a section of this could be uh, analogous? Is that a word? It's a thinly veiled metaphor. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think so too. Throughout, yeah. The intro scene. Like we were mentioned, the the description of the jungle and the yeah. cannibals. They're also shot the room. same way, which is yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. Looking up at the buildings and looking up at the trees through the... Uh, it's true, eh? The, the, there's a visual uh, tie made between the, the actual Amazon forest and the concrete jungle of New York City. Even bustle, bustle, bustle. it opens with a nice scenic overshot mm-hmm. of the Amazon rainforest. Yeah. And then it cuts to New York, but we're on the Empire State Building. And then they look same down thing. on the city. Yeah. yeah. I think the analogy is there. It's definitely a, between the city and front. the jungle in the beginning. Yeah. And then at the end when they're kind of piping it down your throat. Maybe that's what we were saying. Maybe it's more of he had the idea, but it didn't come through strong enough. People didn't get the visual cues. Yeah, maybe. And then he might need to put the audible, we're the bad, we're yeah. not the cannibals kind of part at the end. Well, I think it's also just because the professor is a genuinely good person. Yeah. So when, while we're with yeah. him... Well, these porn stars, they're known to be... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> while well, we're with him, viewing yeah. it from his perspective, Yeah. Um, I don't think we're meant to believe that... He's the voice of reason. Right, right exactly. Yeah. So while we're with him, it's almost natural that we wouldn't be having this meaning of the civilized mm-hmm. people being the actual cannibals. Yeah. A funny thing, yeah. yeah. That even kind of breaks the uh, breaks the uh, mirage of movie making is when uh, when they execute the pig in the movie. There's a, a scene where the uh, the American uh, documentarians are in the village, and they uh, they see a pig tied to a, a stake in the middle of the village, and one of the documentarians comes up, shoots the pig, or kicks it around a bit, yeah, <laughs> squeals, it a bit. shoots the pig, and then another. Uh, one, another documentarian comes in and says, "That's the jungle. That's what happens. This happens every day in the jungle. Brutal jungle." And then runs away. Yeah. And apparently that was supposed to be a big monologue. That he was oh yeah. To say, but he was just so shook up by this pig getting kicked and murdered and shot, like executed execution style. Yeah. That he just couldn't remember his lines and he just said anything and ran away. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> he just said jungle five times. Yeah, exactly. Left. It's tough every day. This happens here. This stuff. I'm sure we can cut in clips of. Uh, <laughs> Silly audio. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that that's an interesting part of it too. That kind of worked out well, though, because I thought that was like he almost seemed. He was definitely. You could tell he was shook up, though. You but he almost he seemed was... so excited. You found a little excited. Yeah, just I, like when they yeah. impaled that. Girl. I think I might have known the fact before I saw. Yeah. It. Uh, well, resaw this time that it uh, it biased my view of it. Yeah, because I definitely interpreted his frantic monologue of the jungle as being just like overly excited about yeah. just massacring this tribe for the sake of his footage <laughs> i'm just on uh, google images here looking at the uh the cover art for cannibal holocaust and it just really is tremendous it's just supposed to be the most terrible things you can see like the, it's the cover of the movie with a woman on a spike. Yeah. Naked, bleeding. One. And then there's a warning next to it. Like, you need the warning. <laughs> <laughs> I think the picture does it enough for you. The most controversial movie ever made is the tagline. I think that's an apt, uh, that's an apt tagline. I think so. I most can't think of very movie many movies made. that are more controversial. Or especially the story with it, him getting arrested and everything. It's just such a funny story that happens, too. Yeah. Like, his effects were so good that he was arrested. I love the... Uh... There's a poster that looks exactly like the uh, painting, Saturn Devouring His yeah, Son. Yeah, it does. That's almost exactly it. Yeah, I love that poster. That's probably that my favorite cool of the movie. One. Yeah. Well, if we screen it at school, we'll have to use that poster. Yeah, Because that's a nice one. That is the cool one. Maybe we'll have the side-by-side. Banned in over 50 countries. I'm not yeah. sure if that was true. I hear a different number every time. Yeah, I don't think that's true. I think it might be uh, more hype than anything. A lot of the murders of the uh, animals, or the animal uh, killings, I don't know. Few of them were necessary. The snake, you could have made a, a snake easy, a rubber snake or something. Yeah, true. And it's just one quick shot of. Tsh. Yeah. Same thing for the tarantula. The but also, walking, I mean, yeah, they didn't even have to kill the snake. I mean, just grab the boot and toss it. 
Yeah. Right? They were cutting the guy's leg off anyways. It's not like he'll need the boot. Yeah, pretty well. I'm angry at this snake. If I lose my leg, it loses its life. I loved in that scene, he gets bit and instantly he's like, nah, cut my leg off. Just do <laughs> yeah, it. Do it. And the whole film crew, <laughs> no hesitation. Okay. Just in, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> I'm pretty sure one of them asks, are we rolling? Does he really? I'm That's sure they funny. do. It sounds, uh, sounds like they would say it. <laughs> that is a crazy part. They cauterize his leg right after yeah. that. That is a good cauterizing. It doesn't seem like that would work. The guy's leg was off. I didn't see a bone in it. I just saw like yeah, meat true. sticking out. Especially not with a, a like machete. A machete. And, yeah. There's like a, a frying pan that can oh, that's take idea. his whole leg at once. Not like a machete that you have to go over it three or four times. You see, Lee, if you were there, it would have gone over differently. You know, it wouldn't have died. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't have died. The idiot would have died. <laughs> that idiot would be alive right now. Do you have a uh, favorite death? Um, or just favorite scene in general. The craziest death is well, it's probably the like the poster boy death or the poster death, yeah. uh, the woman on the spike. That's the one everyone kind of remembers when you think of the movie. Yeah, definitely is the woman on the spike. But uh, hmm, the the dick cutting off one as a member of the male gender, I think that was brutal on a uh, a different level. That was a pit of the stomach kind of brutal. Yeah, but. Um, there's a few good ones. Or when they chop off the guy, the blonde guy with the mustache's head, and they, uh, they quarter him and then eat him and burn him and eat him right away there. Yeah. That's a pretty cool scene. Yeah, I agree. That's pretty crazy. Okay, keep rolling. And they're hiding in the bush, and then the camera yeah. run in and grab another guy. <laughs> keep rolling. I, I like that scene. What about yourself? Do you have a favorite death and scene? Favorite death. There's some good ones in this one. There are some good ones. There's some very good ones. I think... Faye's death is absolutely hilarious just because of the beating. That's a bit that's goofy. That's just that so one. Yeah, goofy. That's yeah. a bit goofy. I think definitely the impaling. That's the classic. Yeah. That is the classic one. It's just, it's one of the only deaths that you don't see the person yeah. actually dying. Yeah. But it somehow managed to be one of the most powerful that's shocking. scenes. That is shocking. Yeah. Just so, that image, too, is a shocking Yeah, exactly. So I appreciate that a lot. Someone impaled completely through anus to mouth yeah. impaling. That's a heavy duty So. Impale perfectly vertical it as is. well it is i think in a few shots actually it does look a bit oh yeah angled okay. from the uh the butt spike to the mouth spike i'll have to watch it with my protractor ready next time <laughs> are you gonna do it <laughs> you should do it <laughs> we'll get the real facts on this <laughs> get my high school geometry kit mom <laughs> that's what the people really want to know <laughs> yeah. was the pike straight <laughs> straighten out that pike <laughs> Get that pike straightened. <laughs> Budget was $100,000. Oh, yeah? Is that a lot back then? I don't know. It's That's a that's a healthy budget. $100,000 for uh, an exploitation B-movie? I guess. I think uh, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah. For an, for Italy, too. Box office was $2 million, though. Oh. $2 million in the U.S. alone. Nice. So I think it did quite well. I, yeah. I think it did quite well. Oh, we were talking before about uh, Eli Roth. I think right. they... Uh, a quick fun fact about that is, uh, I think Diodato has a few cameos in uh, the Hostel movies. Oh yeah, yeah. I think he's some of the he's one of the old, um, you know, the businessmen who uh, who are part of this uh, secret fraternity of uh, or not fraternity, but the secret order yeah, of yeah. Uh, murdering uh, elite, the uh, the elite who murder for uh, for thrills. I think he's one of the uh, the rich guys. Okay, who's talking about murdering, and I think his murder that he talks about. I think it might be a reference to Cannibal Holocaust. I'm not sure, though. I haven't seen that movie. Oh, interesting. It might be the second Hostel. Those they, definitely went downhill, those movies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The first Strongly one downhill. was pretty good. Third one is unwatchable, I think. That's not Eli Roth, though. The third one? Okay, so Eli Roth is behind Hostel as well as Green Inferno? Yeah. Those are, like, his... Yeah. Movies. No, he... Yeah, the third one is done by someone else. And that's also the one in America... Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's a terrible one. The plot for Cannibal Holocaust was uh, written after Diodato saw actual footage like he'd seen in, uh, or that we see in uh, The Last Road to Hell, the execution video. Mm. I think he'd actually seen a rough cut of uh, some third world terrible massacre footage, like just murder kind of footage, zooming on dead bodies and uh, executions and stuff. And uh, a news... Uh, 
a broadcasting company, I guess, wanted to, to show this stuff uncut, but they weren't allowed to show it on TV. And he'd heard this story, and the, the news company confirmed that they had this, these, uh, this footage of these terrible uh, murders and massacres, uh, didn't show it. And then that was what uh, gave him the idea of this cannibal stuff. He'd already made a cannibal movie before that. Like, yeah, too. yeah. His movie prior was uh, another cannibal movie, so he knew the effects and he could do it. And this was just the idea. Tremendous idea, though. Yeah, definitely. To have the two-parter. I think I can't think of a... Well, I'm sure we can think of earlier movies that did the same kind of uh, two-parting technique like uh, Cannibal Holocaust does, but the way Cannibal Holocaust treats it, I think it's, it's pretty... Uh, it's pretty unique how they yeah. do it. And I think it'd be hard to find one that does it as, as well. effectively. Yeah. yeah. Because it's like the first movie's commenting on the second movie while we're watching yeah. both movies at the same time. That's quite interesting. Just as a movie, I think it's effective. Definitely. That Definitely was that was just the, as a movie, yeah. My main criticism about the movie's main criticism mm-hmm. being shallow and just plain yeah. plain shock value. Yeah. Is that it wasn't that. Yeah, yeah, not at all. Because you don't even really get shock value until right. the end of the movie. Yeah, like or, what you were saying. Yeah, until the uh, the second half, for sure. You see one killing, and like they eat raw meat. And you yeah. go, ooh, that's crazy. Like, it opens with the second they get to the jungle when the uh, the army are shooting down <laughs> the cannibals. Yeah. They're eating, like, scraps off of bones and stuff. Yeah. But that's not even that That's bad. not spooky. Yeah. That ain't spooky. Yeah. And, I mean, if that, if that spooked you right off the bat... <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't be watching Cannibal Holocaust. The title might uh, yeah <laughs> might sway some people. That's also what a great title. Yeah, Cannibal definitely. Holocaust. It grabs you. <laughs> it really just gets you. It's, Even just like, well, first you think about it, and you go, "What the hell is this movie about?" <laughs> Cannibal Holocaust. What is this? When we were proposing this movie to the school, uh, they thought it was a World War Two movie too. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I it, thought. I mean, before I knew anything about the movie, yeah. just the title, I thought either a lot of cannibals were going to die. Okay, yeah. Right? Cannibal Holocaust, yeah. Or I thought it was about cannibals, cannibals during, during the Holocaust. Holocaust. Yeah. And it turned out to be neither of those things, but it turned out to be way better than either of I those things. I think so. I very well think so. Genre here says splatter film adventure. Wow. Would you agree with that genre? I would not. No. That is Wasn't that way much underwhelming. Yeah. It wasn't too splatterific. Yeah. Splatter... Well, Hostel's a splatter movie. That's blood that threw at the whole thing. I mean, Tarantino movies are, Those are more splatter, splatter than this. Yeah. This is drip movie more. There's more dripping blood. That's than splattering true. blood. Yeah. And not even that much blood. It's more yeah. just hacking. A lot of hacking and chopping. What were you saying? You were underwhelmed by some of the gore. Yeah, by the end of it, maybe I'm just extremely desensitized. <laughs> Well, I've seen the porn you watched. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just from years and years on the internet, you know? <laughs> we can cut that part. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just, I think it was just hyped up too much in my mind. Yeah. You know, knowing yeah. that all the animal deaths were real yeah. and knowing all the controversy behind it, I was going yeah. into this expecting to be crazy, you know, gagging yeah. half the time. Yeah. And although it is pretty shocking, I got shocked a couple times. I also feel like he could have pushed the envelope a little more. I was underwhelmed with the uh, the adultery uh, punishment. Yeah. I didn't like that scene. I thought that was a goofy scene. With yeah, the, I agree. The white actress. Most and of the, the uh, most of the rape scenes. It looks. I mean, it just looks like you're lying on top of yeah. each other. Yeah. The Especially gang rape now knowing. Big. Yeah. That they're porn stars. Yeah. Honestly, watching <laughs> the rape scenes, it felt like they didn't know how to have sex. They're, yeah. like, kind of sideways the whole time. Flobbing around a bit. Yeah. yeah. And, like, the adultery scene. Yeah. He, like, yeah. such a wide range of motion <laughs> for no reason. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, yeah, it's a big rock, 60. but... <laughs> Still, how do you get that rock so round? Is that the uh, the ceremonial rock? Do you I think, think they so. reuse the rock? I think so. I think they dump it on that. That's the that's the beach that's the... they do it on. That's oh, where yeah. the rock stays. Oh, yeah, she's tied up or something. Yeah. Too, yeah, there's a spike in the... Yeah. Aspire. Yeah. Um, I didn't... When he puts little sticks in the mud yeah. as the final punishment, and then he shoves the mud ball oh, full yeah. of sticks yeah, right yeah. in. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think that'd work. <laughs> you can't shove a football-sized ball of mud into That's after the stick, though? After the stone, I mean? 
with maybe with mud stuff. it's not very it solid is mud right yeah. they just kind of mush around yeah i was expecting after that to see a head splattering that's what i was expecting yes i thought it was yeah. moving to a squish not yeah. a plunge not only that but he does beat her with the stone after yeah but it's so it almost sounds floppy yeah it, uh, it's it's yeah. Yeah, I agree with that one. I didn't like that death yeah, at all. I that's think, my least favorite death. I think that's what I mean when it's underwhelming. Yeah, that was underwhelming for sure. Like, it's shocking at a lot of times, but it's not shocking when it almost needs to be. It's not horribly gruesome. Yeah. Yeah, you'd expect it to be the the most brutal film you'll ever see, but I'm sure yeah. we, we've both seen more worse gore or that's more, more terrible gore. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure we could imagine more horrible things. Yeah, I think if someone made a shot by shot remake of this movie, yeah, with today's practical effects, yeah, first of all, I think it'd be bad. It'd be terrible because I don't think you could ever capture no the essence of Cannibal Holocaust as well as it did. <laughs> well, it, that's the thing because it's almost real. Right. Exactly. What's real and what's not? It's, it's almost real. But if someone were to yeah. make a shot by shot remake, <laughs> yeah. I think there'd be a lot more head explosions. There'd be a yeah. lot more, just way more blood. For sure. Because there's an underwhelming amount of blood. Or at least an unexpectedly low amount yeah, of blood. Yeah, but that I thought was almost like the teasing, you know? He's almost yeah. reeling you in. Oh, you want to see more blood? We're going to show you more. We're going to show you more later. I also think that's part of the realism. Because mm-hmm. Hollywood movies use... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> blood everywhere. Like we mentioned Tarantino Flattering. before. Yeah, heads exploding. That's just a ridiculous, amount of unbelievable blood. amount of blood. Yeah. So it's almost like... But yeah. saying that, the effects are shocking. The yes, effects they are, are yeah. good. No, I'm not, I'm not saying I wasn't shocked, and I'm not saying that it wasn't gruesome. But I think, in my mind, the gore was overhyped. Yeah, yeah. So definitely. after watching it, I was kind of like, ah, I'm could sure, have been gorier. I'm sure as an audience member in 1980, that was the most brutal thing to right, ever seen. Right, exactly. Yeah. This was, this was before the internet. This is before... This was probably terrible when they watched it. This is probably uh, shocking. I can't. I can't we'll imagine. Be arrested. It must yeah. have been. It must have tricked some people. I can't imagine arrested. seeing this in theaters, not knowing anything about oh, the movie. That would be tremendous. In yeah. Theaters. Imagine that a turtle getting cut up into little bits on the big screen. That was the that was the most brutal one. I think definitely. definitely I mean, it was definitely the most graphic. Yeah. They decapitate the turtle. Apparently, I think that scene was also twice as long, or that sequence. Yeah. Before I. Uh, well, I'm sure they seen cut. they filmed the entire killing yeah, and cooking. Probably. Yeah. And they cut it up later. Yeah. But yeah, I was also thinking because all the animals they killed, they gave to the tribe to eat for food. Yeah. Or they themselves ate. Yeah. So I don't know. Is right. it that bad? Because. Any hunter can go yeah. shoot a, uh, I don't know, a grouse, and you're gonna uh, that grouse would have had a full life, but you killed it and you eat it, and it's that's fine. So, same thing with these uh, turtles and snakes and monkeys. They were gonna have full lives, but you kill them and uh, you eat them after. Yeah, that's... exactly. And again, commenting on the necessity of those scenes. Yeah. The they're definitely necessary. They're yeah, definitely I mean, necessary. even just purely purely plot wise, mm-hmm. the film crew mention. That they're only bringing medicine, their film equipment, and what? And, yeah. And ammunition. Yeah, yeah. And those are their essentials, right? Mm-hmm. So they need to eat. Yeah. yeah. So plot wise, it's it natural that they would hunt. Yeah. Do they need to show the hunting? Yes. Yeah. In context of the main theme of the movie, yeah, I think it's necessary. And in the progress, because it starts kind of light with how you start That's thinking, true. oh, what are they doing? They're all naked. They're kind of weirdos. Oh, what are they doing? They're being mean to these guys. Oh, they kind of don't like each other. Then, oh, they're killing this thing, cutting that up. And then, oh, they're burning villages. They're doing that. Like, there's a proper progression yes. in it. It's yeah. not out of uh, out of plot to have, or out of uh, form to have this uh, turtle cut up halfway through. I think it goes it goes in with the uh, the building arc of their uh, their character falls. I agree. How necessary did you feel back in new york mm. when they're reviewing the footage unedited and they have all these board meetings with mm-hmm. the broadcasting company and the professor is telling them no we can't i don't want anything to do with this you haven't seen the footage i've seen yeah your editors don't have the stomach to see right these things. Yeah. now let's go watch it <laughs> yeah right yeah. i felt like yeah well, was that him? I think he was proving the point not to show the, yeah. not to show it how brutal it is. But uh, oh yeah, another layer of trickery. I thought 
it was at the very end of the movie um after they watched the final uh, murder of the cam- of the documentary uh, documentary crew the uh, one of the producers or one of the tv executives says to the projectionist okay john burn that yeah and then at the end of the movie there's the credits and before the credits there's a title that comes up and it says john whatever was uh uh, jailed for two months and yeah. fined a hundred thousand dollars for uh, stealing the footage and showing it. So it's all it. Oh yeah. You get, yeah. These they're talking okay. about Green Inferno, like the movie in the movie. I thought that was like a post. No. Like added into some later that's release the, that's about the, the actual oh. name in the movie. So he's adding another layer of trickery on top. Where you go? Wait, was that the projectionist that was supposed to burn the footage? And then is this how we're watching the sixty millimeter? Wow. Footage? Like, is it actually? F- lost footage that, pe- that these people have found and cut together that i think is the most fun part yeah that's really cool I didn't that's, catch that. there's so many more layers on top where he's making you doubt what's real and what you're watching isn't a fiction movie a fiction film it's definitely kind of a love letter to this uh cinema verite uh oh, yeah. news footage kind of definitely. style he definitely thinks that there's a uh, a truth in it but also uh, a trickery in it too could that be uh, one of his messages that uh, don't believe everything you see? Yeah, I think maybe. I think, right, the whole part about this film crew creating mm-hmm. something to film instead yeah. of just filming things is a big part of it. It reminded me a lot of, um, what's that movie with Jake Gyllenhaal? Night uh, Crawler? Yeah, Night Crawler. Yeah. It reminded me a lot of that. Yeah. Completely different movie. But same kind but of idea. But very yeah. similar message about popular media. Yeah. I'm happy I watched it. I have it downloaded on my computer. Yeah. But I watched it on uh, Shutter. Okay. Because they have this nice intro where it's like a disclaimer, not about what you're about to see. Well, kind of, but it's more a disclaimer about Shutter okay. and their commitment to show the original, unedited, uncensored, oh, nice. pure, the way it was intended Fantastic. to be seen kind of thing. Yeah. And I really appreciated that. Might be different from the YouTube version then. Right, yeah, Might exactly. Be better, yeah. I checked the run times, they're pretty similar. Okay. But the the really bad scenes aren't that long anyways. No. So the run times yeah. would be similar. Yeah. Because I I think the most recent re uh, re release of it is like fifteen seconds shorter or something. Okay. It's like what do you need fifteen yeah. seconds for? What's fifteen seconds gonna change? But um I watched the uh the YouTube rip for this podcast. And uh, everything seemed to be there. Yeah. Yeah, in, in yeah. full. I, I didn't. I don't remember missing anything watching it on YouTube. Okay. So to uh, to wrap up this podcast on Diodato's 1998 Cannibal Holocaust, would you like to uh, give uh, your final words and maybe a final rating on the uh, on the film? A would recommend, would not recommend. Definitely recommend. Definitely. Definitely recommend. I'd, uh, if I had to assign a rating to it, about 9 out of 10, near perfect. I think overall the claims about the pure shock value are just... Unfounded. Unf- easily falsifiable Yeah. by just the... By I watching mean, the movie. Yeah, exactly. I mean, th- even the first scene you get hints of a meaning, a mm-hmm. deeper meaning than just shock value. Yeah. And later in the third act, it's pretty Clear. explicit. Yeah. in its meaning and I think um, the the visual comparisons between civilization and the jungle western civilization and, yeah uh, specifically yeah. and the whole juxtaposition between the two complements the gore enough for it to be valid I agree completely I would uh, I would agree with your rating I'd say maybe uh I like it a lot, but I don't know if I'm getting, uh, if my rating is getting skewed from the history of the film or right. the uh, the clout around the film. But I'd give it around uh, eight and a half. Okay. Probably around there. Still fantastic to watch. Would definitely recommend. What would you say the audience is for a film like this? Who would you recommend it to? Personally, everyone I know. <laughs> yeah. But for the people I don't know who may be listening to this, um, you gotta. It's a hard movie to watch for a lot of people. Yeah, it's important, I think, to know going into the movie that the animal deaths are real. Mm-hmm. So if that is a problem for you, probably don't watch it. But I mean, even with that, I was thinking when I watched the movie or when I was reading up that okay, seven animals were killed in the making of the movie. I probably have more dead animals in my freezer. You know, 
Have a good steak and chicken frozen in there. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a little bit of perspective needed if you're, if you're watching the movie. It's hard to watch maybe the turtle getting cut up. Yeah. But uh, how do you think the chicken in my freezer was cut up? You know? Right, yeah. Not in the jungle, but in the same fashion, I'd imagine. And, I mean, on that note, I think it's, Im- it's important for some people to see a movie like this mm-hmm. where they show that kind of stuff explicitly because it's kind of throwing those exact, you know, social commentaries right in your face. And it's kind of forcing you to make those conclusions yourself. You're faced with uh, with seeing what uh, modernity hides from you, or what civilization right. hides from you. Yeah. So they they'd be more authentic, I guess. The the jungle folk, they're more uh, in the front lines. They're the first person. Uh, they're uh, they're in direct contact with what their actions uh, do. They see the killing. They eat the killing. We just show to a grocery store, you know. Right. We're uh, we're secondary in the act, and they're right there. So. And I think that's that's the argument of the movie, right? Guess, exactly. There, that the jungle folk are more authentic, or more uh, more uh, say grounded, or uh, they have yeah. more perspective than the uh, the modern folk who just want to make some cash money on some crazy footage. Exactly. I don't think the movie is saying that Western civilization is more cannibalistic and savage mm. than the Amazonians. I think they're saying that figuratively, maybe. Figuratively more savage, more? maybe. Ah! Well, I, more I was, exploitative. More yeah, exploitative. definitely more exploitative. Yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. But I think exposing the uh, the dark underbelly of society... Oh, definitely. Was a, ...is a big part of the movie that a lot of people kind of shy away from yeah. because of the shocking footage. It is a direct commentary. Yeah, You, you definitely. can't get away from it being uh, an explicit commentary or critique on uh, civilization as uh, they knew it in 1980 and also just for the uh, the technical the technical achievements of the movie the uh, the amount of trickery the editing the editing's okay I mean you cut back and forth from uh, the Cayman in the river you go ooh is that there is that just, uh, at a zoo or something the Diodato at a zoom um, yeah. it's still a uh, just for the effects alone, it's interesting in watching. Right. See how they how they do these effects because they're tremendous effects. Yeah, the, definitely. The practical effects of the uh, the people getting slaughtered and the people getting uh, cannibalized, they are uh, they are tremendous effects. Yeah, and that's it. My my near perfect rating is definitely brought down by the acting, the yeah. audio, yeah. some some technical Little, flaws yeah. that don't really take away from the film in any real sense. Mm-hmm. but they're there so it's more like people worried about realism or people worried about uh exactitude in the in the film it's not yeah. a, it's not about the the realism of the film it's more uh the the movie going experience something yeah. like this it's not a popcorn movie but it's a uh, maybe a popcorn and uh hot chili movie or something there's a little, <laughs> there's a little spice on the end of these this movie rock and roll rock and roll all right well next week yeah, we'll, we'll be doing John uh, Cassavetes' The Killing of a Chinese Bookie. Yes. 1976, so even older than this one. Uh, the Killing of a Chinese Bookie is uh, a Cassavetes' passion project. Cassavetes being the uh, the actor. Uh, you seen him in Rosemary's Baby? Yep. He's the uh, male lead in Rosemary's Baby. Um, this is his film. He's got all his buddies in it. He's got uh, Ben Gazzara, who's fantastic in it. Uh, Seymour Cassell. Tough name, but I'm sure people will know him if they see his face. Nice mustache on the guy. A fantastic filmic mustache. Um, this, it's the story of a uh, like a cabaret club owner who gets in with the uh, the mob or some uh, gangster characters. He owes them some money, and it's the story of him trying to pay off this money and uh, his fall from grace. I'm looking forward to that one. That, we, that, that, that's a favorite of mine. Now, did Cassavetti uh, act in this or is he purely directing purely directing and writing okay interesting. i believe he wrote and directed it and i think it took years to do too uh, he the way he worked was he would uh act in a few movies with the money he got from those few movies he'd fund his own movies so this is a, a pure independent 1976 this would probably be uh, an original independent one of the uh forerunners of the uh anti kind of studio anti produced overproduced movie it's almost a a home movie with actors. Very cool. 
tremendous movie. I, I can't wait to watch that. Well, we're going to watch the uh, the original cut. The uh, I believe it's two hours and 45 minutes, something like nice. that. There was a second cut that's two hours, I think, or an hour, hour 45, that uh, was did better at the uh, box office or was uh, critically received better. But I think two, uh, the two hour 45 one is a lot... Uh, a lot better a lot better movie okay together the story flows a lot better in the shorter one the scenes are all rearranged oh yeah yeah i don't even want to talk about that one okay <laughs> We're, we'll, well we'll, we'll get into it next yeah, week yeah yeah so uh until then keep uh, keep watching movies yeah this has been the monolith films podcast part of the concordia film club i am lee Byrne. i am nicholas gillum you can find me on instagram at lee underscore burn my Instagram handle is nickgillum77. You'll, uh, you'll have all the information for uh, all of the podcast and club uh, dates and deets. All our handles and all our social medias. Not only ours, but the, uh, the clubs itself. So if you want to get in touch with us, just uh, send us a DM. Yeah, at uh, monolithfilmpod on Instagram, Twitter, on YouTube soon to be a soundcloud itunes and uh, every platform you can think of you can listen to movie talk or join in uh maybe if you want to send uh, your own commentaries your own uh, analyses of uh, the movies you want we'd love to hear uh we might mention it in the show if you want to write in and talk about the camel holocaust yeah yeah you can send your emails over to monolithfilmclub at gmail.com we'll see you next week